morning. Welcome to worship. We're glad that you are tuning in with us. We begin our worship this morning with our thanksgiving for baptism. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the fountain of living water, the rock who gave us birth, our light and our salvation. Blessed are you, O God, maker and ruler of all things. Your voice thundered over the waters at creation. You water the mountains and send springs into the valleys to refresh and satisfy all living things. Through the waters of the flood, you carry those in the ark to safety. Through the sea, you led your people Israel from slavery to freedom. In the wilderness, you nourished them with water from the rock, and you brought them across the river Jordan to the promised land. At the baptism of his death and resurrection, your son, Jesus, has carried us to safety and freedom. The floods shall not overwhelm us, and the deep shall not swallow us up, for Christ has brought us over to the land of promise. He sends us to make disciples, baptizing in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Pour out your Holy Spirit. Wash away sin in this cleansing water. Clothe the baptized with Christ. And claim your daughters and sons, no longer slave and free, no longer male and female, but one with all the baptized in Christ Jesus, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord.
good and evil rages within and around us, and the devil and all the forces that defy you tempt us with empty promises. Keep us steadfast in your word. And when we fall, raise us again and restore us through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the second and third chapters of Genesis. The Lord took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to till it and keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, You may eat freely of every tree in the garden, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat of it, you shall die. Now the serpent was more crafty than any other wild animal that the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, Did God say you shall not eat from any tree in the garden? The woman said to the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden. But God said, You shall not eat of the tree of the fruit of the tree that is in the middle of the garden, nor shall you touch it, or you shall die. <clears throat> but the serpent said to the woman, You will not die, for God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was a delight to the eyes, and that the tree was to be desired to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. And she also gave some to her husband, who was with her, and he ate. Then the eyes of both were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made loincloths for themselves. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We read together Psalm 32. Happy are they whose transgressions are forgiven, and whose sin is put away. Happy are they to whom the Lord imputes no guilt, and in whose spirit there is no guile. While I held my tongue, my bones withered away because of my groaning all day long. For your hand was heavy upon me day and night, my moisture was dried up as in the heat of summer. Then I acknowledged to you and did not acknowledge my sin to you <clears throat> and did not conceal my guilt. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord. Then you forgave me the guilt of my sin. Therefore, all the faithful will make their prayers to you in time of trouble. When the great waters overflow, they shall not reach them. You are my hiding place. You preserve me from trouble. You surround me with shouts of deliverance. I will instruct you and teach you in the way that you should go. I will guide you with my eye. Do not be like horse or mule, which have no understanding, who must be fitted with bit and bridle, or else they will not stay near you. Great are the tribulations of the wicked, but mercy embraces those who trust in the Lord. Be glad, you righteous, and rejoice in the Lord. Shout for joy all who are true of heart. A reading from the fifth chapter of Romans. Just as sin came into the world through one man, and death came through sin, so death spread to all because all have sinned. Sin was indeed in the world before the law, but sin is not reckoned when there is no law. Yet death exercised dominion from Adam to Moses, even over those whose sins were not like the transgression of Adam, who is a type of the one who was to come. But the free gift is not like the trespass. For if the many died through the one man's trespass, much more surely have the grace of God and the free gift in the grace of the one man, Jesus Christ, abounded for many. And the free gift is not like the effect of the one man's sin. For the judgment following one trespass brought condemnation, but the free gift following many trespasses brings justification. If, because of the one man's trespass, death exercised dominion through that one, much more surely 
Will those who receive the abundance of grace and the free gift of righteousness exercise dominion in life through the one man, Jesus Christ? Therefore, just as one man's trespass led to condemnation for all, so one man's acts of righteousness leads to justification and life for all. For just as by the one man's disobedience, the many were made sinners, so by the one man's obedience, the many will be made righteous. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. by the devil. He fasted 40 days and 40 nights, and afterwards he was famished. The tempter came and said to him, If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. But Jesus answered, It is written, One does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and placed him on the pinnacle of the temple, saying to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you, and on their hands they will bear you up, so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. Jesus said to him, Again, it is written, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. And he said to Jesus, All these I will give to you, if you will fall down and worship me. Jesus said to him, Away with you, Satan, for it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Then the devil left him, and suddenly angels came and waited on him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ.
Hi, I'm Corey Driver. I'm assistant to the Bishop for Emerging Ministers and Ministries in the Indiana Kentucky Synod. Welcome to Sermon and Prayers. Well, there's a lot going on this week in the texts, and there's so much we could talk about. We could begin with talking about the fall and the serpent's bad theology. The serpent wants to insinuate that God is selfish, that God is holding on to this knowledge of good and evil uh, and the fruit of the tree thereof for God's self and doesn't want to share. And that if only humans would take what God is trying to hold just for God's self, they would be improved. We could talk about that, but I don't really want to. We could also talk about Satan's bad Christology in the temptation narratives. Satan wants to offer food, fame, and fortune when Jesus is hungry, lonely, and in poverty. The Satan imagines that being Christ is about attaining power and wealth. And that is the Satan's Christology. We could talk about that, but I'd like to talk about something else first, if that's okay. Instead, I want to talk about God moving people. Now, there's a detail in the Genesis account that I really love and come back to again and again. Now, we can read the first couple chapters of Genesis many different ways. Um, in my own devotional reading, I like to see it as an ongoing story. So, God creates humans on the sixth day of creation, along with any number of other animals. And then on the seventh day, God ceases God's creative labors. And then on the eighth day, Sunday morning, God gets back to work and creates still another human. Now, for years and years in Sunday school, I was told that God made that human in the garden. That's not what the text says, however. The text says that God made that human with hands, divine hands in the dirt, and then took that human and placed that human in the garden. You see, God has moved this human, the human that will eventually be divided into Adam and Eve before we hear anything about the human naming animals and enjoying the river and the garden and all that. The human has been moved by God. Now, similarly, in the gospel text, the first action right after Jesus' baptism, right after God acclaims, this is my beloved son, Jesus still has God's words ringing in his ears when the Holy Spirit takes him out to the wilderness. You see, the Spirit of God is moving Jesus too. This whole temptation thing is not a coincidence. It's not happenstance. It's not happening apart from the plan of God. No, God is moving Jesus to a place of temptation, yes, but testing and demonstrating the faithfulness of the Son of God. The devil appears and says, if you are the son of God, but Jesus has just heard God, God's self say, this is my beloved son. Jesus doesn't have to prove anything to anybody. And the Holy Spirit has moved him into the wilderness to demonstrate to, I suspect, himself, certainly to the devil, and then all of those who will of us who will read and hear this story, that Jesus is the Son of God and can therefore resist temptation. God moves people to accomplish God's purposes. Now, friends, there are any number of things happening in the world right this very second 
that may very well be God moving people. In our own mission territory uh, down in Kentucky, there is a movement of God's spirit, right? Uh, that's been in the news very much that uh, people are being moved to testify and pray and lift up the name of Jesus. Seems all well and good to me. What does it mean for us in our normal daily lives, in our faithful living, in our response to the gracious God who saves us, to be moved by the Holy Spirit? The Spirit moved Jesus to reject obedience to the devil in order to meet his own needs. How might God's Spirit might be moving us to look past our own desires to what is good for God's kingdom? The Spirit of God moved Jesus to reject making a show of himself and a show of his power in the temple where people could see a person fall down from the sky but yet be saved. This is making a test of God. How could we, how could God move us past testing God to faithfulness, slow, patient reliance on God to accomplish God's purposes? And finally, God moved Jesus to reject power over kingdoms and cities all over the earth. How might God's Spirit be moving us to reject power and control in favor of humble obedience to God? So as we go out into the world, how do we discern God's movement? One of my favorite professors in seminary always used to say, humans will never go to a place where God is not already at work. God is moving us. The kingdom of God is on the move. How will we respond to our gracious God who calls us to places, to works yet unseen, to spread the love of God and love of neighbor. How is God moving you? Amen.
let us confess our faith together using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Sustained by God's abundant mercy, let us pray for the church, the world, and all of creation. You alone, our God, sustain your church in times of wilderness. Give vision and wisdom to bishops, their staff, and all entrusted with the ministry of administration. Counsel all who faithfully lead your people into the future. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You create verdant gardens and expansive deserts. Tend to the needs of every living creature. Bless those who work in fields and orchards, that the world is nourished by the fruits of their labor. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You know our temptations. Sustain those who govern and legislate. Instill in them a sense of your justice and righteousness, that equity and peace would pervade all the regions and nations of the world. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You are a hiding place for all in distress. Draw near to exiles and accompany all refugees and immigrants, especially children who travel alone. In times of trouble, trauma, or illness, surround your people with your steadfast love. We pray especially for Carol, Vivian, Bob, Albert, Richard, Terry, Dave, Jaylin, Corey, and those we name in our hearts. We pray that you would bless Jake and Kendra's family with new life. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You offer abundance to all. Bless the ministries of hospitality in this place. Care for those who tend to the needs of others, especially worship readers, nursery attendants, and those who serve every week. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You alone are God. We praise you for the faithful departed in every age. Unite our prayers with them, theirs, until our wilderness journey is complete and we rest in you. Comfort the family and friends of Laura Lazenby as they navigate through these difficult times of grief. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We lift our prayers to you, O God, trusting in your steadfast love and your promise to renew your whole creation. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please share a sign of this peace with those among you. offerings and thanksgiving for all your works of merciful power and shape us as people of your justice and freedom you we magnify and adore through Jesus our Savior amen the Lord be with you lift up your hearts let us give thanks to the Lord our God holy God our living water and our merciful guide Together with rivers and seas, wells and springs, we bless and magnify you. 
You led your people Israel through the desert and provided them water from the rock. We praise you for Christ, our rock and our water, who joined us in our desert, pouring out his life for the world. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his life, death, and resurrection, we await your salvation for all this thirsty world. Pour out your Holy Spirit on this holy food and on all the baptized gathered for this feast. Wash away our sin, that we may be revived for our journey by the love of Christ. Through him all glory and honor is yours. Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The body of Christ and the blood of Christ, given and shed for you. Trust that wherever we are gathered, God is present with us. body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Embody God at your table, we have tasted the goodness of Jesus. With the eyes of our hearts open to your promise, empower us to hear the needs of our neighbors and touch the world with your love. Amen. God, the giver of love, Christ, the resurrection and the life, and the Holy Spirit of rebirth bless you on this Lenten journey. Amen.
God's love. Thanks be to God.